I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about CSS frameworks, AngularJS, The Fold, and more. Let's check it out. First up is Skeleton at GetSkeleton.com. This is a dead, simple, responsive boilerplate. Get dead, it? Dead, dead simple. Skeleton. Skeleton, yeah. Dead. That's uh, it's funny. Light as a feather at 400 lines and built with mobile in mind. So it's, it's really lightweight. Uh, the styles are designed to be a starting point, not a UI framework, because there are certainly plenty of those. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. Quick to start with zero compiling or installing necessary. So that's pretty nice. So if we click on the code here, there's a little drop down, and you can look at some of the examples of stuff that is available in Skeleton. Of course, this is all on one web page here, so I can just scroll down. The grid is a 12 column fluid grid with a max width of 960 pixels. So of course, this is responsive. If we scroll down a little further, there's some very nice typography here. And the typography base is Railway. That's a font served by Google. Very cool stuff there. There's some very simple flat buttons. That's pretty nice. Some form styling. And I think you get the idea. Basically, it's just some very simple styling for starting a web page. So if we click on examples here and click on demo, you can kind of get an idea of what this actually looks like. So you can create very simple but nice looking websites with skeletons. So definitely be sure to check that one out. Yeah, maybe use it if um, bootstrap is too much. Yeah. And right. you just want something slimmed down. Exactly. Or if you're using foundation and that's too much, you just want something that's really simple and can help you get started. Yeah, or if you want a, a CSS library named after Bones. Mm -hmm. Or CSS library called Skeleton. Yeah, all, all good reasons to choose that. Next up, we have a collection of AngularJS resources. If you have been wanting to learn AngularJS, well, hey, this is a great GitHub repository of all of the resources you could possibly ever want. They cover all the angles. Literally all the angles. Do you need motivation? This even has motivation. What other collection of resources has motivation? None of them except for this one. That's that's what. So really this goes through all the different things to get started with AngularJS, tutorial, a 60 minute video, more tutorials, style guide, design patterns, and best practices. Then there's different parts of AngularJS that can be difficult to understand. One thing that a lot of people get hung up on is scopes. You want to learn about scopes? Hey, there's a section for that called Understanding Scopes. Boom, you're done. I'm not going to read all the different parts of this web page to you. You can find a link to it in the show notes right below the video and read it yourself. It's very, worth it. Very nice stuff. Next up is a series of tweets from Luke Robolewski. Actual picture of him on top, right? That is the green guy in the spaceship helmet. Yep, that is a Luke Robolewski actual photograph. This is a series of tweets about how there is no fold. Now, we talked about this in a previous episode, but this is really important because for many years, people have talked about how there is some kind of imaginary fold, like in a newspaper, but on a web page and people are worried about whether or not users will see content below the area that loads and whether or not people will actually scroll on a web page. The truth is that there really is no fold. Pretty much everybody scrolls. And in this series of tweets, Luke presents a number of different resources and you can see the bit.ly links here. Oh, wow, there's another graph on there. I only looked at the first one. Oh, you didn't. Figured there was nothing more on the page. You didn't uh, scroll down there. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess you're in that 1% uh, of people that don't scroll. I am the 1%. And there's another one here called uh, page engagement. So this measures how much time people were engaged with stuff that was above the fold and then how much uh, people were engaged with 
stuff that's below the fold. A uh, bunch of other really cool statistics here. That's kind of what Luke Rablewski is known for sharing. Uh, kind of evergreen content, just like just like his helmet. Luke is green, hmm. uh, but really cool stuff. Uh, definitely be sure to check this out and look at each one of the sources that is mentioned in the tweet images because they are also very insightful. Very nice. Next up, we have a blog post about lazy loading Google Maps. So let's say you have a bunch of different Google Maps on a web page. Why would you load them all at the same time, especially if somebody is coming there on a smartphone? That's going to cause a lot of different requests to go through, slowing down the page. Now, as we know, that uh, performance is very important, especially when visiting a web page on a mobile device. So this plugin will help you lazy load the images. Now here is what the page will look like before and after. It's a jQuery plugin where as you scroll down the page, maps are lazily loaded. So there will just be a container div beforehand and then later the map pops into place. Now let's go ahead and look at a demo. I believe it's near the bottom of the page here. You can see I'm scrolled into the viewport for this map of New York and London. And if you watch the bottom of the screen, as I scroll down, a new map will pop in. First it starts out as gray and then fades in. Now this helps because we don't have to download all these maps as soon as the page loads. Now if we go back here to the article, we can see it's pretty easy to get this all going. All you do is include the lazy load Google Maps and you can actually put your Google Maps above and then as you scroll down the page, give it the container and the new Google Map latitude and longitude and then boom, you are good to go. Now you can also, this is also responsive. So as your browser is resized, the map will also be resized and more importantly, recentered. If you have resized a browser before with a map inside it, the marker may be all the way off to the side, not in the center. So this plugin takes care of that as well. And you can also specify during the resize how many times it will attempt to recalculate the map size, etc. Anyway, really useful plugin. Check it out. Very nice stuff. Next up is this wonderful blog post called Best Free Icons for Commercial Web Use. Hmm, I wonder what this blog post is about. Basically, it's about all of the best free icons for commercial web use. If you scroll down, you can see lots of really nice collections of icons, and all of these collections are collected in one place. So there's flat icon here. These are pretty cool because they have a couple of different themes. There's font awesome, always a good choice. There's glyphicons, iconic. That's one that we've talked about in previous episodes of the Treehouse show, and so on. It can be a little bit difficult to know what icons are okay to use under what circumstances. So this is a nice collection that says, hey, these icons are okay for commercial use. Good to know. Yeah, I can dig it. I can dig it too. Get it. I icon? I, yeah. I, like I can dig it, but I use the word icon instead. That's all we have time for this week. I'm at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the links in the show notes right below this video. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next week.